All right, Kevin, back with you for another episode of the Million Dollar Relationships Podcast. And today, I am here with Michelle Prince. Michelle, welcome. So awesome to have you here. Thank you, Kevin. I'm excited to be here. Same. And, you know, I, I need to give. I don't need to. I get to give a shout out to Jeremy Wise because Jeremy was the one that introduced you and I. And, you know, Jeremy is one of those guys. And I, I'm trying to remember when I first met Jeremy. I don't, it's been years ago, but him, he's just one of those guys that's so easy to like, you know? <laughs> no. Well, and he's so good. Funny, I was just talking to him recently and I was telling him he is so good at keeping relationships, you know, because we're all going a million miles an hour and he makes that extra effort, which I so appreciate. And so I feel the same about him too. So I'm so glad he connected us. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> Shout out to Jeremy and Jeremy, if you get an opportunity to listen to this, thank you. And uh, and and you're right. What a testament to the power of relationships, which, is, which I mean, that's what this podcast is all about. And so, what I'd like to do is I want to turn it over to you to start with Michelle. I want to so that you, we can set some context, give the listeners a little bit of an idea of of who you are, what you're all about, and so you know, you, you can talk about what you do, who you serve, what inspires you most about the work you're doing and the impact you're making in the world. And also give us a little bit of the backstory about how you even got into this in the first place. I would love to. Well, I'm CEO of Performance Publishing, a publishing company for business owners, entrepreneurs, founders, leaders, people to tell their story, to connect with other with other you know, with prospects, with other people. We all do business with people we know, like, and trust. So what better way for somebody to get to know you is to know your story. So we have a publishing company. But I never set out to be a an author, a publisher, a speaker, uh, anything like that. It literally was just something that happened as a result of me writing a book in 2009, right. and it, which which is a long story in and of itself. But that was really the beginning of me realizing the power of our stories. And so I tell people all the time, it's not about a book. It's about your story. But when you are, when you leverage your story, when you're a published author, that's how you build your your platform, uh, your authority. I, I wrote a book a couple of years ago called The Power of Authority, and it's a play on words. You can't spell authority without author. Mm -hmm. So I see it as a way to to just get an opportunity to help more people through our story. Um, but my backstory is is interesting. So it started when I was really young. I met Zig Ziglar when I was 18, and it was a really pivotal time in my life. And it's, I won't go into that long story, but let's just say I was forced to go to a seminar of his when I was a senior in high school. Okay. And um, but it set the foundation. And I I walked up to Zig at that end of that conference, and I said, I'm going to work for you one day. You just wait and see. And it was almost five years to the day that I was actually working for him. And that was the beginning of my my career, my exposure to business, to people, really, you know, and it was a, it just had a huge impact on me. And that was the beginning of of my career. But fast forward to 2009, I'd always secretly wanted to write a book. I, I worked for Zig. I quit. I went into software sales. I went into I wanted to go make more money, climb a corporate ladder. And I did. But I found myself not not happy or just not really passionate about life like I was. And I, but I didn't know what to do. Right. So it was just, I just knew inside, I wanted to motivate, inspire and encourage people, but I didn't know how. Well, in 2009, I, I decided to write a book and I secretly wanted to for a long time, but I didn't dare tell anyone. And when I finally decided to do it, my boys, I had two, I have two boys, they were kindergarten and second grade at the time. And I thought, you know what? I just want them to know my story. So I wrote that book for them to read when they grew older. Just It's just my my take on life, my thoughts about personal development, goal setting, et cetera, and things I learned from Zig were all in this book. And But it was that book that literally opened up a full-time career that I've been very blessed to be able to do since, since then wow. of speaking and coaching and seminars. And in 2010 is when we opened the publishing company because I had so many people come to me and say, I want to share my story, but I don't, I don't know where to start. And it literally started with me. Let me help you. If I can do this, you can do this. And that was the beginning of something that I uh, unintentionally started all because I decided to share my story. And that's why I love helping people to tell stories, right? It's not about the book, but there's, there's power when we connect with other people through story. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. You know, I mean, j even just, you know, having you share what you just did is so much more powerful, you know, because because now the listeners really get a much better idea of who you are and what you're all about, Michelle. And just mm -hmm. sharing these stories. And now you have a personal tie. And I'm, I know you were getting ready to share something. So I want to give you the opportunity. Well, no, I was, I was just thinking, though, that it's like, especially nowadays, we're all craving authenticity. And, you know, we're in such a social world. You can be whoever you want to be online. But really, I think most of us, no matter where you are in life, you just want to connect with people that are that are real. And so for me, I love hearing stories of business owners or, or success stories, you know, people that are doing great things, but, but I love the backstory too, meaning it, it didn't just happen overnight. They didn't just have it all figured out. And, and so I think just being authentic is, is one of the greatest gifts that you can, you can give to the people in your life, to your clients, et cetera. And if they don't, and, and the way I look at life is like, look, if I'm not, I'm not a fit for everybody. If you don't like me, that's okay. Better to get that out, out front. <laughs> than, sure. um, sure. But we attract, a lot of times we attract the kind of people that we are. So I think that's just a great way as a business owner to attract the right kind of people, the people you can really serve. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, and, and even sharing, the, I mean, I, I used to be so concerned about what other people would think of me, you know, and <laughs> and through talking with the right people, I've, I've come to realize, you know, most people, they're not thinking about us at all. They're, they're too concerned thinking about what other people think of them, <laughs> yes. which is totally true. And, so and true. my buddy, Jesse, one of the things that he always says is, Kevin said, you know, I got nothing to prove and nothing to hide. Mm. Wow, what an amazing place to come from and what a weight was lifted mm. off my shoulders for, for me personally once I got to that point where I was like you know what I don't care what other people think about me you know the right it is so great. and you know it's funny I wish I I don't know if it's just an age thing or what but I was in my 30s when I finally kind of had that realization and if I could go back to the younger me that that <laughs> It was so worried of what people thought. I mean, to the point, honestly, Kevin, so for those 10 years, I told you I wanted to write a book. Honest to God, th this was subconscious, I think. But every time I would think about writing a book, you know, you should write a book. You know, you're supposed to write a book. I literally would shut myself down with that. First, who do you think you are? Your name is Zig Ziglar. Um, but then it would be like, oh my gosh, what would all my friends think? What would this person think? What would they think? It's like, literally that stopped me. Um, but But that's, you know, that's just our, our negative chatter. And the older you get, hopefully the wiser we get. We don't care as much anymore that's or we right. realize what's in us. Yeah. Yeah. And, but it is an incredibly freeing feeling to just be able to show up and just be us and, and, and be okay with that. And the cool thing is, is people so seldom see people just showing up and being themselves that they're like, the right people, they are just attracted to that. Yeah. You know? They're like, man, I want to be around that more because they want that too, you know? Yeah. And so, yes. Yeah, very cool. Very <laughs> cool. Okay, so now that we've got a little bit of context, I'm going to reiterate the question for the benefit of the listeners. So, Michelle, have you ever been introduced to a person or persons that completely changed the course of your life or your business so much so that much of what you have today would not be possible if not for this person or persons. And Michelle, I'm just really excited to hear your story and your experience around this topic of relationship. Oh my gosh, it's huge. And, and, and sincerely, like this is something I, I, I connect with people on because really everything is relationships. And this answer your question, and, and I can think of so many people, and I feel like I'll do a disservice, of course, my parents, and of course, you know, but if I really am truthful about where I am in life today, with my, especially in business, and even things I've learned, it goes back to one person. And I've already really kind of, you know, alluded to who that was, and, and it is Zig Ziglar. But I have to explain more. It wasn't just working for him. Um right. So obviously working for him at such a young age was, was life-changing in that I was, you know, we were making a difference. I was making a difference selling books and tapes back in the day and booking him to speak. And I just, I was passionate about it, 
but it wasn't that part that changed my life. I, one of the things that I admired about Zig more than anything is he, he was exactly who you thought he was, meaning he, in fact, no, he wasn't. He was better behind closed doors than what you saw on a stage. He had so much integrity. He was so concerned about ever, other people that I remember being like 20 years, 21 years old and just being in awe of his graciousness, his care, like how he would literally just stop it to talk to somebody just because they were going through something. And one of my favorite memories, I have so many, but one of my favorite memories was I was in sales for Zig and yes, I did well in sales, but at the end of the day, I was a, I was a young salesperson in a big company and he, but he knew every single person there and he would walk the aisles, you know, when he was in the office, he traveled a lot. And I remember at the time I was dating my husband. Uh, now we've been married 26 years, but we were dating at the time and he would come into my cubicle and he would just look at me, he'd sit down and say now, and he had that accent, you know, he's like, now, Michelle, is that boy still treating you right? And I was like, yes, sir, he is. And will you just tell me the moment? I mean, he was so involved in our lives and we were people that, you know, the higher you get in life, I, sometimes people take advantage of others who are not at that level. It didn't matter if you could ever do anything for him. He was so gracious. And one more example of that in the company. So what he would do on Christmas morning every year, this is back before cell phones, believe it or not. Uh, we would, he would, um, Christmas morning, he had kids, he had grandkids. He would call every single employee. There were about 80 or so there at the time. And on Christmas morning, he would call everyone individually and say, like, for me, he's like, you know, Michelle, I just want to Merry Christmas. I just want to thank you. We couldn't do this without you. You're so vital to this organization. And again, I was a salesperson. Yeah. And I thought that that to me said so much about it. But I learned a lot about how to treat people, how to value people. And then also how to, how to be successful. One of the things he would say at the end of every meeting, you know, even our, like we would do faith-based meetings there too. And, but even at the end of no matter what the meeting was, how serious it was, he, at the end, he'd say, now go sell somebody something. <laughs> Cause he really believed that yeah. when you sold somebody something, you were serving them. That's right. Were, that's right. Yeah. I could go on and on, but that's not what you wanted me to do. But those are no, just well. Some... I I think that is absolutely. I I think that is so beautiful, Michelle. And you know, mm -hmm. I I certainly didn't know Zig as well as you did. Um, I have been to events where he spoke. And I remember, oh my gosh, I think the first one was in 1997 at the Maidenbauer Center in Bellevue, Washington, about an hour away from where I live. And and I was so excited to just at the end go up and introduce myself to him, you know. And and he was he was just such a gracious guy, you know. And 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 through doing this podcast, uh, I actually got introduced to his son Tom, and, and I got to, I had the privilege of introducing or interviewing Tom uh, a while, probably about a year ago for the podcast. And you know to hear Tom talk. About man, I could get emotional to hear Tom talk about his dad. Man, I mean, you know, and 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 that Tom is now carrying on that business and that legacy. And how amazing is that? Yeah. I and you know, it's interesting. So when you asked me the one person, I was thinking, oh, I wish I could say a few more. Tom would be one because he well, he was my boss when I was there in my twenties. He was a VP of sales at the time. Now he's obviously you know CEO of Ziggler. And we still do a lot together. I'll speak with him and we'll do things to keep Zig's uh, legacy alive. And I feel so grateful. Um, it, it's just, it is. And, and a lot of people ask, is it really real? Are they all really that nice? Yes. Yes, they are. <laughs> I mean, what you see is what you get. And it's funny, Kevin, that was my one of my first jobs out of college. So I just assumed all corporate operated that way, you know, <laughs> caring about people. You and get loving people. really quick, huh? <laughs> No, not, not so much, not so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so now, I, you know, if you look at this relationship that you had with Zig, and, and so I, I'm, I'm sure you come up with lots of examples to the question I'm going to ask. I just want to challenge you to come up with one. The first one that pops into your mind. But if you look over the years and where you 
were able to make a really big impact. And you also know, hands down, that would have never happened if not for the relationship that you and Zeke had. I, I would love to hear an example of something like that. Well, my entire career truly is based a lot on the on Zig because a couple of reasons. Obviously, I worked for him, but that was there was so much that happened in that period that that my passion was planted, my seeds to motivate, encourage, and inspire. I went a different direction when I quit to go into software, but I always came back to that. And I always, when I would think about if if you could do anything, what would you do? And it was always something similar to to what we were doing at Ziggler. And now, because I, every time I speak, I can't help but talk about him because he is a part of my story. He wrote the foreword to my first book that never was going to be shared with anyone. He was the biggest supporter and, and the company is the biggest supporter. I am known in a lot of ways in some, you know, being a supporter of Ziggler that, you know, they called me their ambassador for a little while. So I give a lot of my course I worked hard of course I did that but I think that if not for Zig those doors wouldn't be open and the point of that is I know there's been so many times when I've spoken where people have said I feel like you are here for me or I prayed for this and I needed to hear this or I this and I'm thinking this would not have been possible had those doors not been open um you know, which goes back to really my parents because they're the ones who forced me to go to that seminar in the first place. So, <laughs> you know, I remember Tom. No, I would Tom would share how his dad used to take take. I don't know that he didn't use the word first, but he's like, "Dad took me to seminars from the time I was really young." You know. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I, I think that you know, I my parents got involved in Amway in 1975. Ah. And so as a kid, I got taken to seminars, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and it's not a bad experience, you know. Oh, it's, when uh, you're hearing things that you probably wouldn't hear or you're, when you yeah. hear it from somebody else, it seems to settle in more than if your parents say it, you yeah. know. <laughs> I've had that experience, too, with my own kids that, you know, I remember being at an event and a friend of mine was sharing something with my daughter and my daughter just thought it was out of bad. Did you hear? That was amazing. And I'm thinking to myself, yep, I've said that to you before. You just needed the right messenger. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and sometimes we all just need the right messenger, you know. And so, well, Michelle, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation. And um, for anybody listening to this, that it's just, wow, Kevin, I really like Michelle. I love the way she shows up. Uh, and, and how can they find out more about you, the work you're doing? Maybe, you know, get a copy of your book. How can they, what, what are some resources for them, Michelle? Well, thank you for asking. The best place is performancepublishinggroup.com. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of re free resources. There's, you know, a quiz to see if it's taking, if, you know, should you even write a book? Maybe some do, some don't, but that's a great way. Personally, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on, you know, all kinds of social media. I'd love to connect. And, you know, I love one of my passions is like-minded people. So people that are always growing and learning and wanting to, you know, better themselves are, are my kind of people. So reach out. We'd love to connect. Absolutely. Well, you know, my, my goal for this podcast has always been real simple. I, I want to give you, you know, the, the, the person that I'm interviewing, the opportunity to share your story and your experience around this topic of relationships, because, you know, as you and I, I know we're in complete agreement that as entrepreneurs, relationships are the most valuable asset that we have. And yes. for the listeners who are also entrepreneurs, founders, CEOs, I want to use these conversations to just inspire them to want to place a more intentional focus on creating more real, meaningful, rewarding, and profitable relationships in their own lives. And uh, Michelle, with your help today, we have definitely uh, delivered on that. And so I want to thank you for that. And uh, you know, any, any last thing you feel led to share before we call it a wrap? Well, in honor of Zig, I'll share the, his, his quote that I think sums up relationships better than anything else. And that is, you can have everything in life you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. 
And what do people want? They want to be seen. They want to be heard. They want to be, you know, acknowledged. And so how we treat other people is, is it, it's a win-win when you, when you approach life that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Michelle, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Really appreciate it. I'm excited to share this. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Absolutely.